Hi, I'm Steve Duval from Thor Motor Coach, and welcome to Getting to Know Your RV. In this episode, we are getting to know the Palazzo. So we're gonna start with turning on your battery disconnect switch, but first you need to get into your motor home, and if you'll notice, you'll have two locks on the door, a top one and a bottom. The bottom lock's just the handle, the top is the deadbolt, so handle and deadbolt. You unlock your door, and now you have access to your battery disconnect switch. This is just a lever. You're gonna go ahead and turn on your main power. You press the button, the red light will come on. You are now going to turn on all the 12 volt systems to your motor home. You're gonna to wanna to leave it there the entire trip, okay? Because what happens is your chassis battery is tied into your house batteries, which is also tied into the other power systems. So when you're driving down the road, you're going to charge your batteries. When you are plugged into shore power, you're charging your batteries. When you have your generator on, you're charging your batteries. The only time you're going on to take and turn this switch off is when you are storing your motor home for a long period of time, but be aware that there are going to be a little electrical drains because you have digital clocks and microwaves that will eventually suck all the life out of your battery. Now, if you have the option when you are storing your motor home and we'll show you when you plug in you can use an adapter and plug into a standard outlet and that will keep the batteries charged but again just a reminder battery disconnect switch turn it on leave it on the entire trip there are also a few other panels in there when we head inside we'll talk about but as we are on the outside here's how we're going to play this we're going to open all of the bays we're going to talk about all the features we'll put out the awning we'll show you the lights we're going to talk towing we're going to talk storage so it's everything you need to know to set you up to have a fantastic trip in your palazzo so now that we have our battery switch on there's also a step here that you'll notice goes in and out when you open the door if you would like this to be out the entire time, if you're at camp, you can just hit the step button, it's labeled step, and then when you shut the door, the step will stay out, that way it's not constantly going on and off. So as we walk around here, gonna start up top with this storage bay, you have a little key on your keychain that'll open this. What you have in here is the water line for the ice maker in your refrigerator, so if you would need to fix the line or change the line or service the line, it is going to be in this bay right here. As we open this storage bay, and they are all nice slam latch storage bays, each bay is going to have its own light, nice pebble grain material, new basement material on all of our diesel products that uh, uses polystyrene and Asdale and fiberglass. It's vacuum bonded together, so there's no organic material in our basement anymore. So it's gonna be a little quieter for you and it is going to be easy to clean. It's gonna be durable and this is just gonna last forever. You also have an easy slide tray. You can just pull the handle and you can go ahead and slide your tray in and out as you load up all of your gear. You have some exterior outlets here. Uh, 110, these are GFCI outlets, so in the event they are not working, you're gonna wanna go in and hit the test reset button, the GFCI outlets, or check the fuse box, and we'll walk all over your electrical systems when we walk inside. But that is this storage bay here. Right here, this is your furnace. This does get hot when your furnace is on. You have a nice cool morning or a cold night, you're gonna to wanna to turn your furnace on. We'll show you how to do that when we go inside. It does run off of propane, this does get hot, so be aware of that when you're setting up that this is your furnace exhaust when you are winterizing. A lot of people like to cover that so bugs and critters for the winter can't climb in through there. Down in this bay, we have our fresh water tank. When you do fill your tank, it is important that you do use a hose like this, okay? It is white with the blue stripe. You can buy them anywhere you buy your favorite camping goods. And all you do is you simply put your hose in there, you run that to your spigot, you turn it on, and there's a little vent up in here, so when it is full, it'll start to trickle out. You know you have a fresh water tank that is full and ready to use. A couple of things about your water. Now, if you are driving down the road, and you wanna run the sink or, or the shower, or flush the toilet, whatever it may be, you're gonna to have to have your water pump on. When you go over to the other side and hook up all your camp connections, we'll talk about when you turn your water pump off. But if you wanna run just off your fresh water tank there, you are gonna need your water pump on. I'm gonna move this off to the side. We'll catch up with that hose a little bit later. But how about we talk a little entertainment for you? Here's what's nice. Look at this, so you're outside. You pull the camping chairs out, you're set up, maybe you have a little fire pit going, maybe, you, maybe you're tailgating and you wanna watch the game. Nice big TV with the sound bar, pulls out, it is on a swivel, so you can position it so the sun doesn't glare on there. This is also a Bluetooth sound bar, so you can take out your phone, 
You can program, it hooks up just like anything else, Bluetooth that you connect, and then you can go ahead and stream your uh, favorite, favorite device there. It's also the speakers for the television here. When you're done, it just slides back into place, you lock it, and you have a nice, safe TV. But let's say you're out here and you're spending the day, and like today, the sun is just blasting your eyes out and you want to put out the awning. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, you can do it a couple of different ways. So you can either use the control panel right here to extend or retract your awning, or you can use Rapid Cam Plus. And we're gonna go ahead and we get inside, show you how to hook up, but it is real easy to do. You open the Vega Touch Mira app, and you simply go to where your awnings are, and you hit extend. One touch, and out it comes. The nice thing is, too, there are also lights on here. So if you are out and you want just a nice glow at your campground, maybe it's dark, you don't want to blind the neighbors, but when you're out on an excursion, maybe you've walked into the nearest town, you can go ahead and just turn on your lights. And right there on the arms, you can see we have a nice strip of LED lights, really cast a nice glow. You can turn those on whether the awning is in or whether the awning is out. Now, when you keep the awning in and out, oh, look at that, that is so much nicer. Look at that, on a nice sunny day like this, beautiful to have that out. Now, if I was going away for the rest of the day, I would put the awning in, which we recommend you do, because what if a gust of wind comes up, you don't want to do damage to your awning or your motor home. Also, uh, at night, it's recommended you put it in, same thing, could have a pop-up shower or storm. Now, this will automatically retract if you forget to help save you uh, some headaches and maybe a costly repair. And then to put it in, you simply hit uh, retract, same situation, and in it goes, just like that. Now the sun will be in my eyes again, but that's okay. It's worth it. As we move on down, we do need to talk about our tires because tire maintenance is very, very important as you are traveling down the road. Remember, just like your car, you always want to make sure that you have the proper tire inflation and you're going to find the proper inflation inside on a label. It looks exactly like this. This is the label from this particular motorhome and it is going to tell you what PSI to run your tires at and you are going to want to check that on a daily basis. Make sure that you are maintaining a proper tire pressure on the inside tire because there are two tires here there's an inside and an outside tire we have valve stem extenders so you can check the pressure on the inside tire but make sure you're checking that when the tire is cool maybe in the first thing in the morning before you hit the road you don't want to check it after you just get off a road trip and the tire is hot check the tires when they are cool make sure you're maintaining proper tire pressure for all one two three four five six tires on your palazzo as we walk down the side opening this bay all of our batteries and these are all connected together as we were talking about with your battery disconnect switch when you turn that to on and again you leave it on it is going to take and run all of the power into your coach there's also a circuit breaker back here uh, that you can if there's something tripped you can, can turn that on this rotary switch here is a disconnect switch for your chassis battery so if you want to completely disconnect your chassis batteries go ahead turn this to off this is great when you are storing your motor home but remember if it's not starting when spring rolls around come out here and turn it to on and I bet that fixes the problem that's an important bay to note as we move on down the line here and we open this bay lots happening in here we have our solar controller here you do have solar standard on this if you'd like to add more you most certainly can you can add a few more panels on this and this is going to tell you right now we have a uh, 12.1 volts in the battery so we're doing great and you can go through and see how many volts are coming in this is a 30 amp controller but if you'd like to add more solar you can everything is set up top for you all the strapping that's plug and play away you go this is your inverter you have a pure sine inverter back here and what your inverter is going to do it is going to take all of your DC power and turn it into AC power. That way you can turn on your inverter when you're down the road and you can take and fire up uh, your refrigerator or your television and it is connected to certain outlets and you can get that uh, schematic through our owner's resources page on thormotorcoach.com. Now take note that when you do have your inverter on, it is going to take and use juice from the batteries and you can drain those batteries, but what is nice is we have an auto gen start feature on the rapid camp plus we'll show you how to set so when the voltage gets too low your generator will fire up that will charge your batteries and that way they don't die so you can use your inverter your generator will hook up shore power here in a little bit so a lot of ways to power your motorhome and as we are in the back here 
we do have an exterior propane connection. This is really a great feature to have if you have a gas grill or maybe a portable fire pit. You go ahead and you connect here and then you set up your grill. Remember we had the awning out and the camping chairs? Well, you hook up and you're grilling outside now or you have a nice fire pit. The important thing to note though that this is a regulated connection. So if you are not getting the amount of gas flow to your device, remove the regulator from that device as this is a regulated flow. We have nice frameless windows out here. We'll show you how to open those inside. They open awning style. So when it rains, you can still get a nice breeze. You don't have to worry about rain going in. This is a slide wall right up top here. What you're seeing is not an awning. That's actually a slide topper. And what that does is that is going to protect any debris from getting on the top of your slide. So leaves, sticks, uh, if it's raining, it's going to keep things dry, prevent leaks, and then it's pitched out so when you put it in, everything just falls off and you don't gum up the works on the top of your slide room. Right now, we're going to head out back. So a number of things to talk about out back. We're going to start at the top and work our way down. With this ladder here, this is what you use to climb up to the roof to do your maintenance. And there's a maintenance schedule for your roof. You want to check the seals. You want to check the caulking. Maybe there's some debris up there. You want to clean the roof uh, before you put it away or maybe to start the spring or maybe you just were in a dirty campsite. You can get up there and, and do that. But this is really just for accessing the roof for maintenance items. It's not to climb up and bring camping chairs and coolers when you're at the racetrack to get a better view of wherever you may be. It is just climbing up for maintenance only. In the back, we have some docking lights. In the middle, what you see is your camera for backing up. So when you are in reverse, or if you'd like to have it on the entire time to see what you have behind you that you are towing on your 10,000 pound hitch, we'll talk about in a second here. But that is your backup camera. It's a great tool to have for you. It's nice, it's on the display. So you can really see what's behind you there when you are pulling into camp or when you are just simply driving down the road. Here we have our 6.7 liter diesel power plant. Now, depending on the Palazzo floor plan you have, they do make different power. They do make different horsepower and torque, but it's still 6.7 liter. And a few features to talk about here on our engine, right here, this is for your air filter, which we'll show you is over here on the side. And this is a little gauge. It will tell you when to change it. Uh, it's just a little maintenance reminder here. This is where you're going to add your engine oil. This is a Freightliner chassis diagnostic port. So if you have to take your coach into Freightliner for service, this is where they will plug in and they will get all the diagnostics from your chassis. Right here is a procedure to fill your coolant, okay? This is where you're gonna fill your coolant. Over here you have your transmission oil. You can check your transmission oil there and your engine oil there. So some simple maintenance items you can do right back here on your motor. This is going to be for your license plate, a couple of lights back there. And as we move down, it is time to talk about towing. So this has a 10,000 pound hitch with a 1,000 pound tongue weight. You also have your seven pin connector. And if you'd like to add a trailer brake controller, you are more than welcome to do so. But when you are towing, it's important to keep a couple of things in mind here. We do have a number of weights to talk about, like your gross vehicle weight. So what your gross vehicle weight is, you've heard that is GVW. That is going to be your curb weight, your cargo, your water, your propane, your passengers, okay? That's what that is. Your gross combined weight rating is everything. That is your people, your passengers. That is also what you are towing. And you have that information available to you on thormotorcoach.com. There's also a yellow sticker inside that looks exactly like this. This is your occupant and cargo carrying capacity. It's your OCCC. This number on this label lets you know just how much weight you can add to your motorhome. We're talking gross vehicle weight rating, and you're gonna find all this information on stickers inside next to your driver's seat. They look like this. It's very important information to know. Your GVWR is the maximum allowable weight of a fully loaded Palazzo. We talked about tongue weight. That is the weight that pushes down on the hitch when you're towing. And to find your towing capacity after you are loaded up, what you're gonna do is subtract your gross combined weight rating from your gross vehicle weight, okay? So that's how you get your towing. Now, after you are loaded up, it's important to get your vehicle aligned because when we align them here at the factory, they come to you empty. You get to load whatever you want inside and then have it aligned that way. It's gonna drive exactly how you want it to drive. As we move around to the other side, we have a couple of great features to show you here. We're gonna hook up camp and get you all set. 
Over on our driver's side, we have a few things we want to talk about. This is your air intake for the engine that we just showed you. And underneath this, we have your 50 amp shore power cord. Now, a couple of things to talk about here is this is your 50 amp plug. It is a lot heavier. It is he it's, it's heavy duty. This is going to give you the juice you need when you plug into shore power to power everything in your motorhome. When you do plug in, remember there is a transfer switch inside of here. So think of that as your electricity police. And it's going to know if you're using juice from your shore power or juice from your generator. And that is going to direct that to your converter, which we will talk about when we move inside. But how about we get plugged in? Because this is one of the first things you're going to want to do when you get plugged into camp here. You go ahead, you twist your plug in, you twist the collar on, you lock that into place. You take this side right here, and this is going to go into the fuse box at your campground or wherever you are plugging in. A couple of important points here. Before you plug in, you walk over to the circuit breaker panel and you go ahead and you make sure that all of those switches are in the off position. Then you go ahead and you plug in, fire up uh, the circuit breakers. Now you have 50 amp of power coming into your coach. You've got your refrigerator running, your air conditioner running, but let's say you went to a campground and it only had 30 amps of power. What are you going to do? You're going to pull out your adapter that looks just like this. This is real easy. So what this is going to allow you to do is use your 50 amp cord to get 30 amp service. Now you're only going to have 30 amps, so you may not be able to run all the ACs and the microwave and everything at the same time, but at least you'll have some power. So you take this adapter, and you just simply plug this onto here like that. And then you go ahead and you plug this end into the receptacle following the same steps we just took. Remember when we talked about your house batteries and not them uh, dying on you when you're in storage with the 110 connector? Well, here you go. Looks just like this. You can go ahead and you can plug that on. Then you plug that just into your standard wall outlet. Now you have juice. So just a reminder for the adapter, be it the 110 or the 50 to 30, these do not come with the Palauza. You will have to purchase those wherever you like to buy all of your camping goods. However, the 50 amp shore power cord is included with your Palazzo. Uh, when it comes to power, one thing that I like to do is power up first when you get into camp. That way you have the juice you need when it comes to putting down your jacks and putting out your slides. So make sure that you're hooking up to shore power and we set up camp. We'll already have the juice we need to show you how to get through a easy, easy and fast camp setup. As we move on down the line, Look at that, we have our tankless hot water heater. Not a whole lot to talk about here, but this does provide you hot water for your shower, for your sinks. Uh, back here, you do have an on and off switch. And if it is not working, for some reason, come back, check your on and off switch. There's also a fuse back here. So not a whole lot. To, uh, there's some, some information you'll want to read and there's more information in your owner's manual, but really easy, uh, pretty maintenance free here. Uh, your tankless hot water. As we walk on down to this bay, this is our diesel exhaust fluid, and you are going to need to use this. A couple of warning labels in here, such as, hey, don't use any other fluid. Uh, you can damage the vehicle. So make sure you're using diesel exhaust fluid. Right now we are on uh, just, uh, just about full, maybe just over three quarters of a tank. You fill it here. Um, remember for the DEF gauge to function, the key must be in the on position. So really kind of nice walks you through here. Oh yeah, there's this and this. You're also going to get not only here from the gauge, but you're also going to get on the dashboard. Real neat dashboard. We're going to show you how to use it, but you'll also find your diesel exhaust fluid there. And that's just really going to help that diesel fuel burn a lot cleaner. Uh, tires, we talked about tire maintenance here. Remember, check all six of them, all six of them. As we open up this bay. Oh, what do we have here? Look at this. We have our wet bay. We have uh, our whole home filtration system. We have our gray tank. That is going to hold all of your water from your shower and your sinks. And then we have our black tank, and that is from your toilet. That is your sewage water. We have drains and flushes. So how about I grab my kit of goodies, we start hooking up and show you how to hook up and how fast and easy it is to hook up all your sewer and plumbing at camp. All right, so let's have some fun in our wet bay. A lot to talk about down here. We have our exterior shower. We'll go ahead and start here. You have your hot and your cold. Remember, your water pump has to be on if you are using this when you're not connected to city water, which we'll show you how to do in a second. But when you connect to city water, 
you do not need your water pump on, but this is gonna be a great tool to have when we hook up our plumbing here. Uh, let's go ahead and hook up our water. Okay, let's get some water going into this motor home here. So you're at camp and you want to, you want to hook up, you got a full service site, that is the way to go, right? So you have your hose, and again, this is the hose you're gonna to wanna to use when you are filling your fresh water tank. It is for drinking water, real easy to tell the difference between this and what you're gonna use for uh, flushing your tank out. But white, blue stripe, you can get them anywhere. It's nice, you can kind of run it right up this port. Right here is your, there you go. Put that in, you just go ahead, you screw that in, and now, you have water coming right into your motorhome. A couple of switches here we want to talk about. Your water heater, you can keep it on normal, which is where it will be most of the time when you are either draining it or winterizing and you want to bypass your water heater so you don't get RV antifreeze in there. You go ahead and you turn it right like that. When you want to sanitize your fresh tank, you go ahead and you turn it that way. Uh, Dry camping is where it's at now, so we'll go ahead and we'll talk about that. So when you're dry camping and you want to use uh, your fresh water out of the tank to, to dry camping, you got your hose plugged in, tank fill, you can fill from here, and you can go ahead and winterize and sanitize your fixtures in this position. Again, there's a little QR code. If you have questions, you can scan that. That'll take you and give you all the information. We have more information uh, here as well. Um, in the owner's manual, let me show you all about that. And we have over here our sewer tank flush, which is right up here, which I guess we can uh, go ahead and show you how to use. We also have our low point drain. When you go ahead and you wanna drain um, your water heater, you turn your low point drain on. So let's go ahead and flush our tank, okay? What your tank flush is gonna do is essentially that, is gonna flush out any sort of stragglers that are hanging around in there. So you go ahead and you just screw on your hose, just like that. All right. And then you're gonna take and you turn on and then you're gonna pull your black handle, but you wanna make sure your sewer hose is hooked up before you do that. But that is how easy it is to go ahead and flush your tank. And campgrounds will have a lot of times if uh, you're at a dump station and not a campsite, you can go ahead and drain uh, there. They have the water there on the side. You can hook up there. So it's really nice that they have that for you there. So how about we show you how to hook up your sewer hose here. Let me get uh, our fresh water hose moved over. All right. So you are going to want to have gloves. All right. Any sort of gloves because it is sewage, right? Your black water holds your sewage and your gray tank holds all of the water from your showers and your sinks. Now this is a brand new motor home, but I'm wearing gloves for the purpose of the demonstration. A couple of things to point out here, which is really, really nice, is this swivels up and down, so that makes it real easy to get down into the opening here, and it stays in the up position, so in the event you would forget to put this cap on, that everything's gonna stay right in here and you're not gonna come back to a really messy, stinky bay. So, to get started, you go ahead and you unscrew your cap, and you set that off to the side. Move your pipe down a little bit. I'm gonna take and remove the cover. Push this down a little bit. We're gonna go right about here. And you take your sewer hose, just like this. Again, this is not included with your Thor Motor Coach. You'll have to buy this from wherever you, you like to purchase your camping accessories. You just take this. There are some bayonet style uh, clamps on the side. You go ahead, put that up, twist it down just like this. You're gonna take this end here and you're gonna run this over to the campground and that fits right into the fitting there and you are set. All right, so when you do drain your tanks, you're gonna to wanna to take and pull your black handle first. You wanna get all the sewage out of there. That is gonna run down. You pull your black tank and you'll know when it stops. It is, it's just, you'll hear it come out and then the swooshing will stop. You know you're ready to move on to your gray tank. You go ahead and you pull your gray tank. And the reason we do it in that order is because since your black is sewage, you want that to come out first. And then since the gray water is cleaner, you'll go ahead and you'll rinse everything down that way. But we got the exterior shower that's gonna come into play. So everything is drained out. Close up your black, close up your gray. Go ahead, disconnect. You can go ahead and put your, your cap back on. You get that back out of the way. And hold this up like this. Don't put it away yet because there's still going to be some water in here. This is where you take your exterior shower, turn it on, 
and go ahead and run some water through there. Rinse that baby out, all right? Hold it like this still, and then take and walk this over to the, where you have it into the uh, dump, and then that way anything that's in there will go ahead and empty, and then you can go ahead and you can fill up uh, your storage bin. Plastic bins like this are great. It keeps everything, everything contained. Uh, up here, we have our cable for our campgrounds. So if they do offer cable at the campground, this is where you're gonna plug in your coax and we'll show you how to go between TV and cable when we go inside and take our tour in there. And over here, we do have the drain for your fresh water tank. So when it is time to drain that, you simply take and turn the knob and that'll drain in no time at all. And then over here, we do have our water filter right now. It does have RV antifreeze in it because the unit has been winterized. I don't wanna take that off but you can take that off and clean those out and uh, replace the filter over there. So that is just how easy and simple it is to hook up plumbing at your campsite. A couple more large storage bays to point out as we continue on the outside. There's a little pull cord here. You pull it down and up and then you have access this way. Here is the power cord that does come with your motorhome. A nice place to store it in here. And then we have the slide tray on the other side. But again, Real nice, easy to clean materials. You can wipe this right out, store anything that you need in there. Slam latch doors, nice and secure. And again, don't forget that the key on this is just an easy lock up and down. You're gonna to wanna to take and lock these before you hit the road to make sure that they do stay closed and that they don't come flying open for some reason. If you have to take a sharp corner, you don't want anything flying out and you don't wanna lose your possessions, damage any other vehicles, so on and so forth. As we move down here, we do have a couple of things. We have a little storage tray up here. You can put uh, maybe a little tool bag, whatever it is you need. And we do have our propane tank. So this is going to run your furnace. This is going to run your uh, hot water. This is going to uh, run your exterior propane connection. You have a gauge right here. That'll tell you how full it is. This is where your fill is. And you go ahead and get this filled where maybe a campground, maybe a U-Haul or a hardware store, wherever you can get it filled here. Bleeder valve and you're on and off. Because this is a new tank, it is gonna to have to be purged the very first time that you do use it. So make sure that uh, you give a little extra time because this is gonna take just a few minutes longer. Also, it's important to point out that there are a number of bridges and tunnels and whatnot where you are not allowed to have your propane on when traveling through there. So check your road map before, check the rules of the road. You don't want this on when you are using uh, certain tunnels and, and roadways. So just a couple of things to point out, but it's a very handy feature to have. One of the really nice features about the Palazzo is you have dual fuel fills. You have one on each side. So the nice thing is you can pull into either side when you're going in and you need gas. You don't have to wait in line, whatever pump is open. Here you go, you use your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel. We have talked tires. We have talked about uh, a lot of hot features on here, including Right there, that is the exhaust for your generator. We'll show you in just a few minutes, but when your generator is on, there's your exhaust, and that does get hot, so when you are over here, make sure that you're aware of that because that will, that will get very, very hot. Uh, over here, a lot happening in this bay, a lot of fuses in here. Uh, this is where we're gonna find fuse box for, so let's say something up front isn't working, like your um, keyless entry, or your map lights, or your power adjustable seats. Fuses are right here, so a lot of fuses in here, everything is uh, labeled. Also up here you have the uh, pull for your, the hood release for your generator. So you go ahead and pull that and we'll take a walk around and we'll show you your generator. But first I do want to talk about the last thing on this side, your heated remote mirror. So right here is a camera and when you turn your directional on, you're making a left turn. This will turn on, you'll see the display, you'll see everything down this side of the coach. You'll see the traffic behind you. You'll see somebody in your blind spots. So it's really, really nice to have this. This is your bottom convex mirror. Gonna have to adjust this manually. This one you can adjust from in here. You open this window, you lean forward. If you have the long arms like I do, you can adjust that how you need. And then you adjust this with the remote control. So let's pop the hood and take a look at that generator. Before we open the hood, a couple of things to point out here. You do have your windshield wipers, you have your headlights, your daytime running lights, you have your fog lights, all of those are controlled inside. We pulled the hood release and now it is time to take a look at our generator. You reach down, there's just a little lever and 
up it comes. You also have a logo that lights up, which is really, really cool. So this is your quiet diesel 6,000 watt generator, and this is going to give you enough power to run everything in your motor home. Uh, a really nice feature to have here. A couple of things to take note with your generator. There are a few ways to start it. You can start it using your Rapid Camp Plus. You can start it inside with the dash button we'll show you. You can also start it from out here. Uh, there's a breaker right next to it, so if it's not starting, come check that breaker. Make sure it's in the on position. You need to prime the generator first. Hold it down. When you get this red light, it means you are primed, ready to rock and roll. Hit the start button. This baby will fire right up for you. This does run off of your fuel tank. So it's gonna pull gas right out of your fuel tank to run. You also um, have a, a safety feature in here. So if you get to a quarter of a tank, it will stop running. That way you don't get stranded somewhere. And just like anything else, there is maintenance on this. There's coolant. You have to check your coolant level like you do in a car. That is going to be the white tank here. And you can see there's a minimum and a max. And then yellow is your oil. You have to make sure your oil level is maintained. And as a maintenance schedule, it's recommended in the Onan manual, which is in the bag when you get your motor home, it will recommend you change your oil, your first oil change after 20 hours of usage. So after you run that baby for 20 hours, go ahead, change your oil. And then the regular intervals are 150 hours on the generator. There's actually a gauge over on the side that'll tell you how many hours are on it. But the nice thing about your generator is you can use it when you are driving down the road. So if you have passengers and they're just not getting the cool air from the air conditioner from the cockpit you can go ahead and you can keep this on and you can use the acs while you are driving down the road you can also use it when you are dry camping keep that on keep it running keep your coach at a comfortable temperature so if you are somewhere and you're out on an excursion you can keep that on and you will know that you're going to come back to a nice comfortable cooled coach a couple of things to show you on the other side before we head in few more things to point out on your campsite. Another mirror there with the camera. And again, you can adjust the bottom manually and the top from inside. We do have our, oh, we have a number of different names for it. Some people call it the pet window. Some people call it a trucker's window, but this gives you a nice clear view of what's next to you. Uh, so you don't have any blind spots over here. A quick check if there's a lower vehicle. And also if you camp with your dogs, they love to look out this window. Another storage bay up here for you, nice and large. Throw a shop vac in there, maybe an air compressor, whatever you need. As we move on down, we talked about two fuel fills. This is the other one located right behind your front tire. We do have one more storage bay here, another great line storage bay. Again, they each have their own lights. You can control with Rabbit Camp Plus, which we're about to hook up because we're going to walk inside. We're going to show you how to Put down your jacks, put out your slides, and then show you all the features of your living area. You're gonna love what you see. All right, so we're inside, we're ready to set up camp. This is how you put your jacks down. You wanna make sure that your engine is on. Turn the key, just like starting the other car, it fires up. Right over here is your air dump. You wanna take this switch, put it to lower, and just let all the air out of your suspension. What this is gonna do is take and lower you three to four inches closer to the ground so when you put your jacks down you're going in and out of your coach you don't have this giant step up so you're going to let the airbags drain you'll know when they're done it will stop whistling the air is out make sure that your parking brake is on that is taking the yellow handle and pulling it towards you you are in neutral which is clearly indicated by your stock over here is your one touch leveling jacks you simply hit the on button and you hit auto now the jacks will come down and automatically level your coach now one thing you may want to pack with you in one of the many storage bays that we showed you are some sort of jack pads or wooden squares there are campgrounds that do require you to put those down under your jack pads you're also going to want to use those in case you're dry camping somewhere and maybe the ground is a little bit soft you're going to want to put those under as well so make sure you're carrying four five six eight however many you want to carry however many you have room for go ahead and carry some of those with you as the coach levels it's also important to note you don't want to be walking back and forth you don't want a lot of movement i know everybody's excited to get out and see where you are but go ahead have a seat wait until the coach levels out and then when it is level and you'll get a little light in the center that blinks green that says you're level you're going to want to go out and check and make sure that all four tires well 
one, two, three, four, five, six. All six tires are firmly planted on the ground. If they are not, you can retract the jacks by hitting the retract all jacks. You can see the green lights on there, so that means we're level. Retract will bring all the jacks up. You can also put these down manually. You just hit, hold down the manual button and you can put them down either the two front jacks, hitting rear puts down the two rear jacks, hitting left puts down the two on the left side, hitting right puts down on the right side. When you are ready to put the jacks up, when you are done, same sort of procedure. You go ahead, you make sure that your coach is on, your parking brake is set, you hit retract, the jacks will come back up. And then you wanna take in from the lower position, put it into auto, that way the airbags will fill back up for you. And that's just how easy it is to put the jacks down. We're gonna walk through a lot of the features up here on the dash. We showed you the jack pads here. Right over here, we do have nice privacy roller shades. So at night you pull these down, it'll block out the sun. Over here we have our headlight controls. It works just like your headlights, headlights, fog lights. You can turn those on. It will have indicators on the dash for you. We talked about the mirrors. Right down below is adjusting for your mirrors, just like your car. You have the switch, left side, right side, arrows up, down. And again, I talked about adjusting that. You can open the window and you can adjust that and sit back and see, uh, make sure you got that convex mirror dialed in and you can maybe have uh, your co-pilot do the same for the other side there. Um, right here we have a vent for your air conditioning. Down below a couple of different things here. We have a toggle switch for the dock lights. Those were out back we showed you right next to the backup camera. Those control that. We have an auxiliary start button. So what this will do in the event that your chassis battery is not firing up your motorhome. Really easy to do. You can hold this auxiliary start button in, you turn the key and it will take and draw battery power from your house batteries and it will start your motorhome. It also works the other way too. We have mirror heat, so on those days where it gets frosty outside, you just turn on the, the mirror heat and then it will just melt away. You'll have a nice clear vision behind you. Uh, a lot happening here on the dashboard. So this is the Freightliner OptiView dash. Here's a complete run through of how this whole thing works. Walking through the display, front and center, your speed, and you can see your parking brake is set. On the left, your tachometer. Inside the tach is your gear shift and shift mode. These are your fuel and coolant gauges, along with a reminder to use ultra low sulfur diesel only. Here is the air PSI, which is mirrored on the right side next to your speedometer. Below, you have your oil pressure gauge and your DEF tank level. There's a little display for your battery volts and odometer. Up top are icons you need when you connect your phone for hands-free calling. Signal strength, battery, and Bluetooth. And we're going to show you how to connect in just a few minutes. In the middle is your menu display, which you can customize using the steering wheel controls on the left side with the up and down arrows and the OK button. You also have a home button, a back arrow, and this button that looks like pages is how you bring up your menu options. The plus and minus buttons are volume controls. Let's dive into those menus. You have access to two trip meters. On top of showing miles passed, you can quickly and easily see how much time has elapsed, how many gallons of fuel you've used, fuel economy, average speed, and how many hours you've sat at idle. A quick tap of the OK button resets all the info for your next adventure. By selecting gauges, a trio of info boxes pops up. In this configuration, we see your gear, transmission temp, and boost gauges, but say you want to see something different. You can do that. By using the up and down arrow buttons, you can choose to display any three items in any order. Highlight the item you want to change, then use the up and down arrows to display another info box. Here, we now have engine load. This is distance to empty. Show your RPMs or oil pressure. You can even display the barometric pressure. Maybe you want to put your gear selection in the middle. Set this up however you want. This is a great way to keep an eye on what you think is the most important. Tap the back button and scroll down to the next item and you can see the current fuel economy. Next down the list is vehicle configuration and there are a number of options here. Topping the list is Bluetooth. If you want to pair a device, hit OK. On your phone, look for OPTIVW and connect to this. Now select Pair Device. Once it connects, the name displays here. You can connect multiple devices, but you need to pair them one at a time. 
Device Priority allows you to choose what phone you want the system to answer when a call comes in. We'll show you how to handle your phone calls in just a minute here. Disconnecting a device from the system is as easy as scrolling to the Remove a Device and ditching the one you no longer want connected. Dash brightness is easy to figure out. Up for brighter, down for dimmer. Scrolling one down on the menu and we have your units, standard or metric. If you'd like to reset it all, simply reset to default. Moving on to the Diagnostic tab, the system is going to search for you and in the event a fault is found, it will be displayed here. You have an internal diagnostic section as well that lays out a number of features and if they are working or on or off. There are three pages full of items you can easily keep track of. The Transmission Prognostics page shows you the oil level, life of the filter, and percentage of oil life remaining. Finally, under System Info, you see the version, date, and status of the DriveTech software. Let's take a tour of the stock on the right. This is your gear shifter. Swivel up for drive, neutral is in the middle, and reverse is a quick dial down. You can see on the digital dash what gear you are in. If you want manual gear selection, push the stock towards the dash and a little M will appear on the display. Pull the lever toward you to shift gears. When you go past fifth, you return to auto, or you can press the stock in to return to auto. To set your engine brake, pull the stock down once for low, twice for medium, and three times for high. Staying on the same stock, to switch between economy and performance mode, press and hold this button on the end. We showed you how the steering wheel controls on the left work for your menu, so let's move to the controls on the right. This is for your Bluetooth. When a call comes in, simply press the phone icon to answer. The speaker with the line mutes your call, and you press down here to hang up. This button is your marker light interrupter control. Your cruise control settings are here and easy to use. You have on and off, cancel, resume, and set. Right down below your steering column, you do have your air brakes. You pull it out towards you to set the brakes. When you are underway, you go ahead and you push that in and that releases the brake. This pedal down here is how you adjust your steering up and down. You can adjust or dial in however you want to, right? Maybe you want it out of the way when you're swiveling the seats around, which they do, and we will show you that. Set that where you want it. You have your brake, you have your gas, another vent for your air conditioning, ignition switch. You put that in there, start it up, regular key. Generator start, you can start your generator from here. Again, it's the same procedure as we showed you outside. You hold it down to prime it, and then when the light is on, you hold it up and start it. You can also stop it from here. You have some dash fans right up here. These are not to cool you off. They're actually to help defrost this window. You can turn those on to get a little defroster going. You have a nightshade button, so at night, just like here, a little roller shade, only this. We'll go down with the button. Now, because the motorhome is on, it is only going to go down part way. That is a safety feature. You can also uh, bring it up. You know, maybe the sun's really, really bright. You just put it down a little bit while you're driving. Take that glare right out of your eyes. And then we also have a switch right here. Dome light. This is your dome light. As we look at your infotainment center here, a lot of great features and functions. You can hit the home button and that will show you everything you can do here. So you have a radio, you press radio, you can tune in your local stations there, find something you like, Sirius XM. If you can't find something you like on Sirius XM, wow, they have hundreds of channels, everything you want from talk to music to drama, sports, it's all right there for you. That's how you access that. Navigation, you pull up your navigation tab and you go ahead and you set the parameters here on on uh, what you'd like, it is Axera iGo Primo. This is RV specific navigation. So what this is gonna do is give you the option to type in the length, width, height of your motorhome and then it's gonna take you down motorhome safe route so you don't end up somewhere where you're like, oh, I'm never gonna get under that bridge. We went the wrong way. That's not gonna happen uh, with this. You can press the home button. There are buttons up here for your volume and your power, a micro SD card slot. Uh, we're gonna go back home here and let's hit uh, we did GPS we're gonna accept the license agreement here and going back home let's go back to radio and hit our home button again all right navigation USB if you still carry mp3 files you know you have your playlist on a little thumb drive you can go ahead and you can plug that down into the USB port right down here and then you can play your mp3 files through there Bluetooth phone, you can take and you can connect a phone here for Bluetooth calls. And again, all the controls for that are right there on your steering wheel. 
and we're moving over to Bluetooth music, same sort of deal, you're connected and you have your Bluetooth music streaming through your radio. Rear camera, we talked about the rear camera. It will, you press that button and it will bring up the uh, image behind you. Here's our, and you can see, so if we were, say we were backing into our garage here, and that'd be great to be able to see what's behind you there and then you have your spotter back there helping you in. You hit the home button, that'll take you right back home. And as we scroll through the rest, we have uh, some settings over here, so you can go ahead and change the wallpaper, or you can adjust your EQ, whatever it may be. And finally, we have uh, our zone. So when you're playing music and you have passengers, you can go ahead and pipe music in their speakers on the ceiling, but you can pipe in, you know, maybe they want to hear the music back here, maybe they don't, you can go ahead and choose the zone there. Uh, moving down, we have our HVAC controls, work just like they do in your car. You turn the AC on, you turn the fan on, you adjust the temperature, uh, recirculate the air, you have your fan position where you want it, you want it defrost. Number of USB ports, we have 12 volt over here, and then we have USB over here, and it's great so you can plug your phone in right here and you just connect and you charge. A nice little place to store it there. As you're driving, you can see it's connected here. That's reading it as a USB device. You can set your phone to, to read there. Cup holders, sunglasses, whatever else you need to do up here. One great thing about these seats is you can adjust them any way you want. You can raise, it's all power adjustable too. You can raise, you can lower, tilt back, tilt forward, you can lean back, lean forward. They also swivel so you can dial in the perfect ride for this. And after we take a look at the rest of the features up here, we're gonna spin around, spin these chairs around, and then show off the living area. The plaza also has this great flip up dash workstation. So if you are on the road, your passenger can adjust the seat using the controls we just showed you. Set up a laptop here, type away, maybe some emails, maybe post some photos. You have an air conditioning vent here. You have a 12 volt plug here. You also have a 110 plug here. So as you're driving down the road, if your generator is on, you can go ahead and keep your laptop or tablet or whatever it may be charged. Cup holders over here, another place for sunglasses or change. You do have nice armrests. So a real comfortable, comfortable cabin to be taking those long trips in. Now that our jacks are down, let's put the slides out, open this baby up. You can do that a number of ways. You can use the Rapid Camp Plus app, which we've showed you to put out your awning, or you can use the main touch screen here. Let me show you how to hook the app up first because it's really easy and you're gonna to wanna to do that. Down at the gear settings, you click on mobile app, and then you download Vega Touch Mira right to your phone. It works on Android, it works on Apple. You download that, it will show up, it'll say Mira 187607, that is your unit, then you type in your PIN, and it's gonna ask you to change that. Then once that is here, you can go ahead and you can put out your slide room. So that would be the slide tab there, and when you go on here, it's the same sort of icon. You confirm that uh, everything is ready to roll, you hit slides, and you do have a rear slide for the bedroom, and you have a driver's side slide on this particular motorhome. So we're gonna go ahead and we are going to hit the extend button. And again, you wanna make sure that your motorhome is on and out it goes. A Couple of things as the wall goes out that I wanna to touch on here is one, always touch the screen when your wall is going out, be it here or here on the main screen. You want the motors to engage and stay fully engaged. They only go in and out, they're not smart motors. What they do is pull the slide in and out, and every once in a while, they can become out of sync. If you know you have a guest and maybe somebody's run into the, the, the cockpit to sit down, or you forgot something and your button's finger slips off the button, a couple of ways that you can sync your motors back up. All right, so now that they're out, you heard that little sinking noise, you hold it down for three to five seconds afterwards, to make sure that the motors are fully engaged. But in the event that the wall, let's pretend this phone is your wall, and maybe it gets a little, a little cockeyed like that. If you do six touches, one, two, three, yes, it is, the bed is up. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you hear it sync up, you hear that motor sync up, you know that they're synced. There's also, in uh, one of the storage bays, and it's gonna vary depending on your floor plan, there's a white control module that you can reset the motors with as well. There's a little, sort of like a little opening with a little push button. You're gonna need maybe a pen or a small screwdriver. You get under there and 
just like here. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Then on the seventh, you hold it down and the light will flash green and that will resync the motors. You can come in and try it again that way. And if for some reason the motor is not working at all for you, you can unplug the two cables and then you can have some buddies at the campsite come over and you can manually push the wall in and then you can go ahead and you can hook those cables back up. But if you keep your finger on the button, make sure the motors are fully extended every once in a while, one, two, three, four, five, six, hold on the six, your buttons will go, your, your, their motors will line back up and you'll be good to go and you won't have any issues. So as we walk through the rest of our multiplex rapid camp setup here, let's start with the home button here. So here you're going to have your on and off master switch so you can turn your lights on and off. You can have your tank levels over here, your fresh water, your gray water, your black water, your propane. We talked about turning your water pump on and off. You can do that from here. You can also do that from the Rapid Camp Plus mobile app. Your climate control, your front AC, your rear AC, your engine block heater. If you need to turn that on, if you're somewhere cold, you go ahead and you turn that on. That way you're going to have simple starts. Your house battery is at 12.8 volts. Your chassis battery is uh, charging as well. You see right here uh, the display. Your auto gen start can be disabled and set from this screen. And if you want to turn on your inverter, you can do that from here as well. The little lightning bolt symbol takes you right over to your auto gen starting. So you hit AGS and you enable it. And when you do, it's going to ask you a couple of questions. You enable that. Now you can go ahead and you can set your uh, auto gen start. So setting your auto gen start is really easy. You have a number of different triggers. You can choose your low volts or HVAC load. Remember we talked about low voltage if your inverter is on and you're keeping that on and your refrigerator is running and uh, the other outlets that are powered by it, that's going to drain your batteries. Now if you have your voltage set, when your batteries hit that voltage, the generator is going to fire up and it is going to charge your batteries. Your HVAC load is great for when you have pets or you're away and you want to go ahead and set your temperature. So when it reaches a temperature inside, which you set through your thermostat here, the generator will fire up and that way it'll fire your AC back up and then that way that your coach stays nice and comfortable. Lights, we talked about your master light from a home screen, but there's a dedicated light page where every single light switch in the motor home is located from your cargo, your step, there's a little step light down here, your awning lights, living room ceiling and hall ceiling have arrows on them. That means you can dim them, same as your bedroom ceiling. You just hold it down and the lights will dim. Dinette, kitchen, sofa, bedroom, bath, they can all be controlled from here. The thermostat's exactly that, your front and rear ACs. You have cool, you have furnace, you can set it to auto. So this runs just like the thermostat in your house. Something important to point out when you're running your air conditioning today, it's 79 degrees outside and it's 71 in here so we're doing all right so you want to take and make sure that your your inside temp thermostat is not 10 to 15 degrees lower than the ambient temperature so what that means is say it is 85 degrees outside okay you go down to 10 you're at 75 you could probably go down to maybe 70 uh, keeping it in that 10 to 15 degree window and then you turn your thermostat there you want to set that no more than 15 degrees lower because what will happen is the air condition will work too hard and you're going to freeze up your coils and it's going to take six seven eight hours to defrost that doesn't make for a very fun trip so make sure that you're setting your temperature in the morning or in the cool hours of the evening that way when the sun comes up before the day really starts to heat up you're going to have your thermostat set for the day at whatever maybe it's cool nice 70 degrees so we set that at 70 and then as it warms up and feels the need to run it'll run and maintain your motor home and keep it a nice comfortable 70 degrees so again set your thermostat in the evening or early in the morning and you can keep it there um, but you don't want to just take it no it's a uh, hundred degrees out i'm going to set my thermostat to 60 that just spells trouble so make sure you're not doing that the little fan is for your vents and fans you have a fan in the kitchen you have a fan in the bath you can open and close the lids from here and the nice thing is is here's a, an example right here you can either control it from here there's a dial you can open up here as well and what will, you can do which is really nice is so let's say you burnt the toast and you want uh, to get the smoke out or you just want a nice breeze through here you can actually open open it and there's a cover on it so when it rains you can keep that open and it's not going to rain through your vent moving down that is your slide wall so we have 
our driver's slide, we have our rear slide, we have our bunk, yep, you have a drop down overhead bunk you can use in here. We're gonna walk you through uh, using this. I'll tell you real quick though, um, you're gonna wanna make sure that your pins are out on the bunk. We'll show you how to do that. And you can raise and lower it from this screen. You control your awning from here as well. And then as we move down to our settings button, Again, we showed you the mobile app. You can connect there. Network diagnostic, it shows you there are no faults. Everything's working just as it should be. You can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius. This tells us we're in the Palazzo 33.5. You can change the screen brightness up here. Auto dimming mode if you want, cleaning mode. You can set it to cleaning mode and it will turn the screen black, wipe the smudges off. 15 seconds later, it pops back on. You're good to go and you can set your clock from here. Right now it says it's 1.39 in the morning. No, Tom and I don't work past 1.38 in the morning, so that's how you know the clock is wrong. So you can go ahead and you can set your time, you can choose a 24-hour time, and it's just that easy. We have a complete detailed walkthrough of every single function on our YouTube channel. We're going to link that in our description. But now that we have walked through our Rapid Camp Plus, we're going to spin around and start in the front and walk back, look at all of our seating options and sleeping options. Starting up front with our overhead bunk, make sure that your seats are lean back. Okay, you're going to lean your seats back because you don't want the bunk to come down and squish this nice, fine, comfortable area. We'll spin these around here in a few minutes. There are two pins on the side. You simply pull the pins. And right over here, either using, how do we do this? Either the screen, our tablet, phone, or right over here, you can control your overhead bunk. Just hit the bunk down button, and down it comes. The nice thing is, is these Remote panels come off the wall. If you would like to sit over there with it for some reason, you can. And the batteries are located in here. And on the screen, it will show you that the batteries need replaced. So your bunk comes down. There is a ladder for it. You put your ladder right here and you can climb up. Again, it tells you the ladder capacity is 250 pounds and 500 pounds right up here in the bunk. You got a nice mattress up here. You can take and have a nice, uh, Nice safety net so nobody rolls out of bed in the middle of the night. And put your bunk up in the morning when you're done. Maybe you have some, uh, some jewelry or some belongings that you want to keep safe while you're gone. You can go ahead and some people like to use that as a makeshift safe. We were talking about speakers. We were talking about the dash. They're located right here for your uh, living area. So your bunk goes up. It is all the way up, and you walk around. We're going to undo the seat belts when we put away the, or rotate the seats around. You put your pins back in, and just like that, your bunk is up, and you are ready to swivel your captain's chairs. Now, what we're going to find here is there is a lever on each side. You want to make sure that your seat is in the upright position. All right, you take the lever, hold the lever, and away you go. And if you want to take and adjust these forward, you have the, uh, the controls are over here, and the same on this side. You grab the lever over here, push the lever, and now you have a nice, this really opens up the living area here. Uh, one thing to point out is, as we're coming in and out here, and it's kind of a, a moist fall day as we're, we're tracking in a lot of, a lot of dirt and debris. This is a residential vinyl flooring, so it's really easy to clean up. Because it's residential, you can just use a mop or a Swiffer and it will sweep right up. And it's all rolled out in one sheet, so you're not going to have uh, those seams. But real easy to clean, real durable, real easy to take care of. We have a lot of seating options in here. Outside of the swivel captain's chairs, we have a very comfortable sofa. You can see we have two seat belts over here. That seats two. And we have a dream dinette. And if you'll notice, there's one, two, three, four seat belts here. So you can one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight people can ride all buckled in. We'll start with our nice comfortable sofa over here. You can, you can hang out over here. You got a TV across from you. You have your nice air conditioning unit. Um, boy, who wouldn't want to just hang out here, right? Well, at some point you're gonna to have to sleep. You can sleep here too. So you just kind of tuck your seat belts in and this just lifts up, folds out, and you have a nice jackknife sofa. You throw a sleeping bag up there. Uh, you have uh, your blankets up there, whatever it may be. And then in the morning, simply fold that back and away you go. Over, oh, I also want to point out you do have 110 outlets over here. So if you have a tablet or something, you can go ahead and 
you know, charge up, plug in right up there, and uh, away you go. But in order for those to work, make sure that you are plugged into shore power or running your generator. Right across, we do have our Dream Dinette. Look at this, you have storage below, you throw some board games there. You sit here for, for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. You have a TV and a sound bar here. Uh, this is a Bluetooth sound bar. You connect it just like you would any other Bluetooth device. It's tied to the speakers, so a nice sound for you. Uh, your TV is right here, and we do have a Blu-ray player and a couple other features to show you in a cabinet here that uh, are important to know. We'll take you through that after I show you everything about this Dream Dinette. So you're here by day, and just like, just like the sofa here at night, you want to make it into a bed. You simply take and you move your cushions out of the way. Got your back cushions here, and your seat cushions, and you'll you'll tuck the seat belts out of the way, too. And these are all flipped up, and then underneath is a handle. You move the handle, you push that down, and you put your cushions right back into place. And now you have a nice bed for the night. You can even throw those back in there if you if you need, and then you roll out the sleeping bag you get yourself a, a mug of cocoa and uh, here you go in the morning you simply reverse the process again you're going to want to take you're going to move your cushions just set them off to the side here you lift these up and you lift these up lift your table up lock the handle in place like that put your cushions down put your cushions right back into place here And you'd even have these little back cushions. Another nice thing that you do have on all your windows is you do have, uh, this one might be good to show you over here on. We do have sun shades. So if it's bright and sunny out, you can go ahead and that'll take a lot of the glare out. And then at night, you do have the roller shades. Something else that's great about these roller shades, we talked about uh, your air conditioner. If you're gonna be gone all day and it's nice and sunny out, go ahead and shut those and it blocks out the sun and it's going to keep your coach a little bit cooler inside. So those are a great feature to put down on your windows one to block out the light and get yourself some privacy. So we talked a little TV. Let's head over to our entertainment cabinet and show you the options in here. Depending on your floor plan, the location will vary, but the setup will be the same. You have this great entertainment cabinet, a couple of things to talk about here. You do have your Blu-ray player. So you go to rent a movie or bring some with you. You can go ahead and pop a, a disc in there. You can also route this to the TV outside thanks to this HDMI distribution box. It turns on and off. You can go through the different televisions here. And what's nice about this is there are HDMI cables coming in and out. So if you have a streaming device, uh, or you have a video game console, you can connect that right into here. And the great thing is if you do have a streaming device or even a video game console, this coach has the WineGuard Connect 2.0 4G hotspot and Wi-Fi extender. So the unit on top will act as your TV antenna. And when you are tuning in TV, all right, you wanna make sure that this light is green. So there's a green light. And when that is on, you know that you can tune in the local channels. If you're hooked to the cable at the campground and we showed you where that connection was outside in your wet bay you go ahead and you push the button in and the lights off and now you can tune in your cable channels um, we, uh, the other great feature about the WineGuard connect is with your streaming device is that you can create your own safe secure internet hotspot no matter where you happen to be you log on you either set up a data plan through WineGuard, or you can use a sim card from your favorite carrier you put it on this box up top, there are two screws. A card goes in, you shut that, now you have internet no matter where you happen to be. It's really nice, it's really easy to use. You have a remote for your Blu-ray player there. You have a couple of 110 plugs. You have some storage up there. Actually, there's a lot of storage everywhere throughout this motorhome. We'll show you as we go on, but that is your entertainment cabinet. If your Thoromotor coach is equipped with the fireplace, you can set the mood and the perfect temperature in your living area. In order for the fireplace to work, you need to be plugged into shore power or have the generator running. The button on the far right is the power switch. Press it to turn the fireplace on or off. With the button above the light bulb icon, you can change the color from this warm yellow orange to a cool blue or a mix of both. Simply press to cycle through the colors until you have the one you want. The next button over allows you to control the brightness of the fireplace. 
press to dim or brighten the flames. The thermometer is how you change the temperature. Just press until you have your desired temp. If you want just the flames with no heat, press until you see the words off. Let's talk about the great features in your kitchen. Nice solid surface countertops. You have solid surface sink covers. And what I love about these is it gives you a lot of extra room if you would need it for a cutting board or a cookbook. So let's say you pull this one off, you store it right down below. There's a place for it. And look at that, you even have a garbage can under the sink. Lots and lots of storage down here. Put your silverware here. You can put uh, napkins in here, aluminum foil and sandwich bags there, pots and pans here, rolling pins and cookie sheets there. Whatever it may be, you can load up. But a nice double bowl sink here, a lot of counter space, a pop-up outlet. This is really handy. You have three outlets here. So maybe you're running a, a coffee maker here and a food processor here. Whatever it may be, this is really handy. You have another 110 right up top. Again, these are both GFCI, and we'll talk about resetting that when we talk about your circuits and breakers. You have some lights under the uh, cabinets here, which you can control right over here with your Rapid Cam Plus control panel. You have an electric induction cooktop. I love these, these are great. Now, you can't use any old pan. You do have to use something that has magnetic properties. And that means if you have a favorite cast iron skillet that you love taking camping with you, you, you know, you throw it in the fire, you cook outside, you can use that right here. We also have a convection microwave that you can use as a microwave or you can use it as an oven. It is real easy to use. Uh, you simply hit uh, convect and then you set your temperature like you would on an oven. In fact, we have uh, an entire channel dedicated to using the tools in your motorhome for cooking. It's called Mobile Meals. We've made a number of different delicious things from simple monkey bread to a full Thanksgiving dinner using nothing more than our convection microwave and our electric induction cooktop. So these are the tools of your kitchen. Uh, right over here is another storage cabinet for plates and cups, and you have the outlet for your microwave right up over here. The other nice thing about this motorhome is you have a residential refrigerator with an ice maker. I'm going to show you that. You have a nice residential stainless steel refrigerator. I want to point out that it does have a lock on here that you can use here to open and you can keep everything nice and locked. So if you're making some uh, miss, oh, miss that corner. Shh, you turn real fast. We've all been there. This isn't going to come flying out and your uh, double peanut butter fudge brownie ice cream isn't going to come flying out of your freezer. But nice and cold up here. You do have an ice maker. We showed you where the uh, water lines for that are outside, but a lot of room in here. You have some shelves down below. You have a nice fridge. You get your butter in here, your eggs, your condiments. You control right here your temperature. Five is the coldest. One is not the coldest. So go ahead and dial in exactly what you want. You have some drawers down below for, um, I was going to say lettuce, but you don't, you don't eat salads on vacation. That's, that's actually the law. You cannot eat a salad on vacation. But this is your stainless steel refrigerator. A lot more to show you. We have a bathroom, we have bunks, and we have a bedroom. Here we are in the Palazzo bathroom. We have a number of features to talk about. Yes, you're going to have a lot of great storage from medicine cabinets, you have a lot of storage above, a lot of counter space, a place for your towels and your soaps. We have over here our tankless hot water heater. We talked about that one. Make sure your propane is on. We showed you where that is outside. Turn the propane on. The red button means it is on and then up and down is how you can control your temperature. So real easy to use. You set the temperature you like from hot to not so hot and you are good to go. The other thing we talked about quite a bit actually are the GFCI outlets. And if the outlets aren't working for some reason, we said go reset the GFCI. This is it in the bathroom. Just like the one in your home, you just hit the button. There's test and there is reset. And if you are having an outlet that is not working when you are plugged in or your generator is on, there's a good chance it is this. So come in here and check this out and see if that has not popped. You have your sink, hot, cold. You have your toilet paper holder here. You have a nice porcelain toilet. And we do need to spend a little time with toilet talk. Let's talk toilets here in the Palazzo, okay? So just like a toilet, you open the lid. Guys, you gotta lift the seat, okay? So the seat's lifted up and you're ready to do whatever it is you need to do. This is a foot flush model. So you hold it down halfway you fill a little bit of water up in there, and then when you're done doing your business, you go ahead, you hold that down, water will wash everything down right into where? That's right, right into your black tank. But you need to make sure that you are using either 
RV specific toilet paper or a marine grade toilet paper. If you are not, you are going to take and you're going to completely clog your bathroom. So make sure that you have the right brand of toilet paper that you're using and you should have no issues. Right behind me here, nice shower. You have a glass door. That has a lock so you can lock that when you're driving so it doesn't go and cause damage. Make sure that is locked when you're driving. Uh, your shower, you have hot, you have cold, you have a lot of nice racks in here. It's on a wand, you can, you can wash high, you can wash low. Everything you need in your shower is right there. And because it does have that skylight, you get a lot of nice natural light in here and gives you a lot of headroom. You also have one of those great fans we were talking about. You can control from the Rapid Cam Plus switch here or from the main panel or from your remote panel. So that is really easy. This is a nice bathroom setup, a lot of nice room in here. You also have a lot of nice room for either guests or either a closet. We're gonna turn around and show you the bunks. You can get the Palazzo in this bunkhouse model and there are a lot of great options here. So if you have guests, you have a nice set of bunks and the mattresses are all individually wrapped for you right down here. So when you get it, you tear it open, you set it up and you dive in and you have a great sleep. We also have a number of people who love this because one, not only can you have guests, but if you're gonna be gone for a very long time, you're gonna be on an extended trip or maybe you are full-time and you want the maximum amount of closet space. Yep, this is the ladder for your bunks right here. You can go ahead and then top bunk, bottom bunk. You move the ladder out of the way. You store that for a while. Check this out. Ladies, you're gonna like this, okay? Simply fold this up, lock this into place with the pin, you have a closet rod here. Do you notice that? Now you have a giant wardrobe back here. All your hanging clothes. You can go ahead and just pull the straps here and lock up and look at that. Nice closet for you. So a lot of great options here in the bunkhouse model. So we have another place to sleep and that would be woo, the bed, a kilt, the tilt of you bed. It's beautiful back here. So we're gonna spin around and show you all the options and features in your bedroom. Nice bedroom layouts in the Palazzo, and it's going to vary depending on the floor plan you have in here. We have a nice tilt-of-view bed. So you're set up here, you're, you're reading, or maybe you're watching the TV, and then at night you're like, oh, i got to get some sleep. You just press this button, and the bed will come right down for you, which is a really nice feature. Or, or you, one thing that uh, we get a lot of feedback on is you can even use it tilt the head up just a little bit, and sometimes that'll even help with snoring. Uh, if you do snore and you have to bring a CPAP machine along with you, we do have outlets for it. We have nice counter space where it will fit, and we do have outlets uh, for your CPAP machine. We also have USB charging ports back here as well. It's also important to note that before you put the slide in back here, and there'll even be a warning on your rapid cam control panel that the bed needs to be in the up position. As the bed is raising, you have a lot of nice cabinets back here. You have a lot of nice storage. You have more speakers on the ceiling. Remember we talked about the zones on the radio. You have uh, more speakers back here. Your air conditioning unit, a couple of things to talk about on this particular model is you do have little vents here. So if you want just all the cold air, if it was just a blistering hot day and you just really want all the cold air coming right on you, you're an AC hog, you can open up the vents and it'll come right down and cool you down. Or you can close those and then we do have a number of vents where it will circulate it and distribute the cold air a little more evenly. A lot of nice closet space back here. You have hanging space here. You have more closets over here. You have uh, roller shades, and privacy shades back here that you can pull down and keep out all the peepers in the morning. But a nice bedroom and another feature that you have in here is a stackable washer and dryer. You'll find your washer and dryer behind the louvered doors. You open it up and here you go. You have your washer, you have your dryer, works just like the one you have at home. You throw your laundry in, you dry it, you put it away in some of the great storage and you are set. One of the questions we actually get uh, is, can you use your washer and dryer while you're driving? Yes, you can. You gotta make sure your generator and your water pump is on, but it's a great way to do a couple loads of laundry while you're traveling to your next destination. Why not do it while you're traveling down the road? Here at Thorough Motor Coach, your safety is very important to us, which is why your motorhome is equipped with a fire extinguisher, which you'll find typically up front. 
You also have smoke detectors on the ceiling located throughout. You also have this carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm. So make sure that uh, you keep up to date. You are replacing the batteries and you're following the maintenance schedule on these. It'll tell you right on here, this needs to be replaced by September of 2025. So you have another five years on this. But in the event one of these alarms do go off, please make sure that you exit the coach and stay safe. So we've talked about inverters. We've talked about transfer switches. Let's talk about converters. In your Palazzo, it is going to be located in this particular floor plan right here in the bedroom, but it is always going to be in a place that is accessible to you in case you blow a fuse or a breaker and you need to check it out. So eventually, essentially what your converter does here is it is going to take and distribute the power, whether you are on your generator or shore power, and it's going to take and send the 110 volt uh, power to where it needs it and the 12 volt power as well. So a couple of different things happening here. You have your t your blade style fuses over here uh, for your 12 volt system and then just like your house you have your breakers. So fuses and breakers here and they're all labeled for you. You have your main, your front AC, your dryer, your rear AC, your block heater, your inverter, your washer. Everything is all labeled for you. So in the event something's not working you can come and see if you tripped a breaker or if something is not working and everything is labeled here as well on this panel on what all the fuses are. You can go ahead, check it, pull it out and replace it. When you do replace a fuse, let's say this 15 blue right here and all you have is a 30. Well, you don't want to take and throw the 13 or the 30 where the 15 is or vice versa. You don't want to take and put a 15 where the 30 is. Replace it with exactly what is supposed to be there. And that is your fuses and breakers and your converter. And wrapping up, I want to talk about this little item that you will find in your motorhome when you pick it up. This is a black bag and inside it is full of goodness. All kinds of, of guides and papers and warranties. You're going to find in here your warranty guide. Your Palazzo is covered with a 12-year structural, 6-year lamination, and 1-year limited warranty. And this takes you through the proper procedures and maintenance schedule that you need to maintain your warranty. You're also going to have an owner's manual so you can thumb through your owner's manual. A lot of great resources in here that you're going to want to go ahead and read. We recommend you read these as well. You're also going to find a number of other warranty cards inside for all your appliances, be it your TV, your microwave, whatever the appliance is. Go ahead and fill those out and send those cards in because you're going to need that to keep up to date on all of the warranties for your different items. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend now that you are excited to travel in your Thor Motor Coach is why not get signed up for our owner's resources. This is the page on ThorMotorCoach.com. All you simply do is click owner's resources and you sign up, you create an account, you put in your VIN number and Presto, just like that, if you would ever need a schematic or a diagram specific to your motor home, you will find it in the owner's resources. So make sure you sign up for owner's resources. Because this is a Palazzo, why not check out the Thor Diesel Club? It is a great group of people who do a lot of great traveling, form some great bonds. Uh, I encourage you to go ahead and check out the Thor Diesel Club. It is always a good time, no matter where they are holding their rally. I hope you found this walkthrough very, very useful. Again, there are a number of different uh, walkthroughs that we have that we have in the description below. If you'd like more in-depth detail on using RapidCamp Plus, for example, you will find that there as well. So thanks for watching and enjoy your travels no matter where you happen to go.